I'm going to try to fix this speaker here. First thing I want to do is take off the uh, excess wire and solder here. There. Then we'll some solder here. Tin the tip of this wire. And attach the wire. There. Now that'll work as is, but here's another good idea for things like this which are quite flexible. Hot glue. I want to put the wires in a pattern here that'll get the glue to make them stick and offer some strain relief. This is a crappy glue gun. To get it to stick to the frame of the speaker here and then let it cool off. So that hot glue should provide some strain relief for those wires and now that we have the speaker we get a beep. Okay, quick recap. ROM D0 and ROM D8 are on the board. If we turn the computer on, we get nothing but question marks. If we remove D8, the system boots to a boot disk, but not to basic. And if we leave D0 in there, it will eventually get quite hot. Uh, I'm not sure if it works or not. There could be a link between these two, so it could be that this won't do anything with that one removed regardless. So I am going to try to replace those two ROM chips with another pair of chips that we have from a spare board. Here are two spare chips, D0 and D8. D0 chip that we got as a spare unfortunately has a broken pin on it right here we can work around that but we're not even sure if the d0 chip on the other board on the from the other board is bad so we'll put this one in and see if we can get it to boot to basic with the original d0 chip even though it gets hot i've removed the disc controller because we don't want it to boot from disc we want to see if it drops into basic And we're not getting basic, we are getting a machine language monitor interrupt. I'm going to attempt to work around this broken pin by taking a piece of solid wire, putting it in the socket ahead of time, putting the chip in, and then soldering that wire onto this chip leg. I'm going to put just the tiniest drop of liquid flux right there on the wire and the lead and with the liquid flux already there shouldn't need to feed any solder I'm to take a close look at that with the magnifier it definitely looks like we've got a good connection so that was just a little bit of solder that was already on the tip of the iron so see if that did any good click there it is no bootable device, we're booting straight into an Apple Basic Prompt. So those two ROM chips are good. I will check the temperatures of them after they've been on for a while. But I want to try to run diagnostics and see if the system is actually going to be able to see all of the RAM now. So in the end, it looks like we had two bad ROM chips, D0 and D8. D8 would cause it to boot, uh, to not boot and show us just question marks. 
and the D0 chip that was in there uh, apparently just caused a break uh, before it could even boot into Applesoft Basic. Let's boot off the diagnostics disk now and see what that software can see. And I've got a bare keyboard here, so I'm just going to have to short out pads to uh, hit the keys that we need. So machine status is A and that should be right here. Let's see if it shows how much RAM it shows. Uh, it's still saying 16K with language card. So we're already on pass three. The memory that it's seeing, it is testing just fine, but something is keeping it from seeing anything but the first 16K, or so it would seem. So I've been doing some troubleshooting here without the camera running. Uh, we were only seeing the first 16 kilobytes of RAM, so I started swapping around RAM chips. So it turns out all of the first row of RAM in row C was just fine. Memory test on that was good, but I've identified at least 10 bad RAM chips so far by just putting known chips, known good RAM chips in row C and swapping out one at a time with the rest of the RAM to see if the system will even boot up. So if there's a bad RAM chip in row C, you're going to get the same problem we had before, nothing but question marks. So it looks good so far. We're on pass 5 with our 16K, 32K, 48K, and language card all passing RAM tests. So, so far so good. We have at least 10 so far that are no good. So... I'm going to do some more swapping of RAM chips from our spare board to test those and uh, show you the procedure that I was using to do the tests of the RAM chips. So with no boot floppy, turning the computer on, you should get your basic prompt. However, if there's a bad RAM chip, as in in row C in particular, you put a bad RAM chip in row C. Turn it on, we get nothing but question marks. So we know that RAM chip is bad. Take that out. Put the good one back in. And as long as all the RAM chips in row C are good, we'll get our prompt. So I have here all of the remaining RAM chips from the spare board and I'm going to swap those in one at a time and see what happens. Take out the first RAM chip in row C. That is a known good. And we'll take this one. Pop it in. Turn the system on. We get a prompt, that one's good. Take it out. Put it over here with the good chips. Pop another one in. That chip is no good. That goes up here with the bad chips. That's good. We're getting lucky here with the last bit of RAM chips. It just occurred to me you can't see prompt on the screen when I turn the system on and get a good chip. There it is. Pull this one out again, put it with the good chips, last chip. 
Okay, so that chip is a bad chip. So here's our status now. With no boot device, turn the computer on. We go straight to the basic prompt. Power light works. With a boot device, moving to a diagnostics disk, we have a machine status of forty eight K with language card, this controller. Escape. Yes. Okay, running the RAM tests. RAM tests are all passing, as far as I can tell. We've gone through multiple passes with no failure notifications. And uh, checking the chip temperatures. D0 is at 40, and D8 is at 40. I'm gonna leave the RAM test running for a little while and recheck the temperatures, but uh, right now, thing looks back to 100%. Except for the keyboard, obviously. The keyboard's gonna be a separate video altogether. Update. We have a fault detected on the RAM, on the language card. And bank is going zero through F I'm trying to figure out which one this is on the language card because this seems to be sitting right between D and E. So what I've done now is taken all of the RAM off of the language card and swapped it with the RAM in bank zero, uh, row C. So this is all the RAM from the language card now and this is all the RAM from row C. So I'll run the diagnostics again and we'll see if the fault, the intermittent fault moves to the main board or if it stays on the card. If the fault stays on the card, then the problem is with the card and not the chips. So there's the answer. We've got a fault on the language card again, even though all the RAM chips have been swapped around. So the problem is not with the chips, the problem is with the card itself. Maybe capacitor, maybe one of the other chips on board. We'll have to uh, take a look at that.